We were brothers once. Once. Ta-da. What's Baron V here, and today I'm going to be reviewing the Transformers The Last Night Voyager Class Premiere Edition Megatron. Kind of. This is technically a knockoff of the Premiere Edition Voyager from The Last Night. Um, it's, it's the same figure, but it's just paint apps are a bit different. Um, this guy's actual name is the... M Megatron Aircraft Deformation Toy Aircraft, God tier name. But yeah, this is literally fully just the Voyager Premier Edition Megatron from the last night. And uh, yeah, he is missing a few parts because I got him on eBay for $9. If you dig hard enough, you can find like gold like this for only $9 on eBay. But yeah, the reason why he's only $9 is because he doesn't come in a package. He was loose, missing the sword and the nose cone of the jet. But honestly, I can I can live with that because this figure, even though it's a knockoff missing parts, is pretty awesome. But like every video, I shall quickly try my best to go over the source material, or what this specific Megatron is from, which is The Last Night, a movie which is interesting to say the least. The first half of the movie, I would say, is hot garbage in some points almost unwatchable but i don't know what happens like specifically the finale but the second half of the movie and again specifying that finale it just turns up and is like really good because i actually really like the finale of this movie the action's great the effects are beautiful and overall it was like really enjoyable um i loved the fact that they brought back barricade lennox simmons and wheelie even though Simmons, Barricade, and Wheelie didn't really show up that much. But, like, seeing Lennox back, that was great. Missed those characters from the original trilogy. That was great. And also, this movie gave the greatest Megatron design of all time, in my opinion. This is my favorite design for Megatron, period, out of anything. I just, I just, I love the, uh, darker color. Although this figure does not capture it because in the movie he's gunmetal gray, not this blue. But the premiere edition has this blue, too. But yeah, I love it because, number one, it has fusion cannon, love the knight look, I love knights in general, and he has a battle mask, and if you know me, I love battle, I love battle masks, and I love masked characters, and the battle mask on him looks awesome, sadly this figure doesn't have that, but, if I can pull the picture up, there is a head you can buy that has the battle mask, and that's what I'm gonna do for this figure, because honestly... I'll probably end up buying two so I can get one fully complete, but yeah, the Voyager's a little pricey, which is why the knockoff's way cheaper, but also, go for the knockoff if you want. It's actually still really solid. Also, The Last Night has my favorite Mumblebee design and Barricade design, I just love those designs, but yeah. Uh, Megatron doesn't really appear that much in the movie, but for what you do get is really awesome. Specifically, before we get to the figure, my favorite scene from the movie, I'm telling you right now, is the scene where he picks up Starscream's head, and it was like, the end is near, my treacherous friend, so sad that you won't be able to see it. I don't think that's exactly what he says, because I forgot, but you know what, it's pretty similar. I just love that line, because seeing him pick up Starscream's head and just acknowledge, you know, he might have betrayed him multiple times, but you know, it was like his companion, and that's kind of what Nitro Zeus was in this movie, is like a mix of Shockwave and uh, Starscream. Sad Starscream wasn't there, but you know what? It's okay. But yeah, talking about the figure now, finally. Uh, he, do he did come with a sword that I don't have, but that's pretty much it. The difference between this and the normal one is that it's painted there. I shall go over all the differences, because there are quite a few. But yeah, he doesn't come with the sword, but he still has a port in his hand. And you can fit, like, I think some siege weapons. This is Starscream's Null Rays. And technically, you're not breaking the laws of existence if Megatron's holding a Null Ray. And if you take Studio Series Starscream's weapon, you can put it in there, too. And you can have him, like, dual-wield guns, which is awesome. So you can still give him weapons if you don't have the sword, but I mean, if you buy this in the package, 
he will have the sword I just bought him, you know, loose. And I was a little nervous when it did say loose because I forgot if it said loose out of package or loose joints, but I can tell you, none of these joints are loose. But let's get talking about this figure finally. And talk about that head sculpt because it, it's all right. Um, it's not my favorite Megatron head design when it's not in the battle mask. And this figure doesn't really capture the head because it is the premiere edition is little missed but oh kicked it but yeah still looks great although the major difference is if we pull up the picture of him of the uh the normal voyager let me just go over the differences so far the head has solid red plastic inside the head but the normal one has clear plastic so he has light piping but this figure doesn't have that, so he's got Galvatron Syndrome, where he definitely, obviously, is supposed to have light piping, but they painted the back of his head. Um, he doesn't have a Decepticon symbol on his chest, but I kind of prefer that. I hate when they just slap Decepticon symbols in random locations. And he, d this figure has a lot of, like, gunmetal gray on, like, the shoulders, the chest, like, I think on the ankles and stuff. That is missing on this figure. The only gunmetal is on his knees. But eh, it's not that noticeable. And then the biggest part is the gold. This figure has like a bronzish gold while the normal one had a little bit of a normal gold, kind of more mustard color. Wasn't my favorite shade. I do prefer this. But yeah, also he has gold here instead of black and I kind of prefer that. But yeah, back to the head. It's all right. He's got his teeth gritting, which is kind of cool. And these are separate pieces, but sadly, they don't move forward. Going to the chest. Love the knight design. This is a design that's, like, more humanoid than, the, like, the first trilogy, which had a more, like, insectoid feel. So if you do want to put this with your, like, Bumblebee figure, since they don't have a Megatron, I feel like he'd fit in really well. But also, I love the asymmetric gold design, because it just adds to the chaos of Megatron. Nice shaping here. Love the details here. Got some nice gold picked out. Love all these sharp edges throughout. Got a little bit of gold in there. Just looks great. The back's a little ugly. I mean, it's flat and clean, but it's just it's very hollow. Now, there would be a cockpit, not a cockpit, a nose cone going down there. But sadly, yeah, it's missing. But you can, if it is missing, push it up a bit to get a flusher back. But yeah, this shoulder got some more of that nice gold. Some wavy details. Looks great. Got some screw holes on the back. This shoulder, different design. Got a nice spike going around. And the back looks great. Um, this arm, the arms are the same design, I believe. Actually, no, they're not. Oh, I got tripped out because <laughs> the golds are very similar. But yeah, I got a lot of nice detail in there. It is hollow in here, but that's for transformation. Looks great. Go to the back into this arm which the main focus is that fusion cannon which is bigger in the movie but you know what it still looks great here more nice detail that fusion cannon looks great got some nice paint picked out got a skirt pieces and for some reason this one's really glossy like these two are really glossy but no other part is also for some reason they get really cold like this figure will feel normal but then these pieces will feel really cold sometimes but yeah, they got nice sculpting. You got, like, the side skirts here, which I like the way the jet mode integrates in here. You have a port on the back, so if you had a stand with a hole or a peg, you can put them on it. And I don't know if these are accurate. I don't think so. But also, he does have thrusters there in the movie because he does fly up when he, I think he's going to Quintessa. After he has the staff, he does have thrusters in this area. What's not 100% accurate are these wings, but you know what? They fold up kind of nice, fill up the leg a bit got these nice knee pads come down to his feet which is pretty much my least favorite look of this design I don't really like how he has his toes out but rather than that this figure looks great love the detailing it's a little gappy from the top but it's all right oh, this just a little bigger but yeah and one last note before I go into the uh, articulation and comparisons they they didn't peg the chest in on this on like the promo shot so it's just hanging out which is a little weird 
but yeah, articulation-wise, got a ball joint at the head, can move up, down, rotate, kind of bob. I hate that the neck goes with it, that just looks really weird. And yeah, if it is a little loose, you could, I think, tighten it a bit. These pieces hinge out on both of these, but it gets a little, the fusion cannon gets in the way a bit. So the arms can go out, but like I said, the fusion cannon can kind of get in the way a bit. Upper arm rotation, which is a little tight on this figure. Single jointed elbow, but it goes really far. No real wrist, which is sad, but it's alright. No waist, but that's for transformation. These pieces hinge forward and out, so you can kick pretty far. Kick kind of back, but it'll go out a bit. He can do really nice splits, upper leg rotation, single jointed knee, but it goes very high. This kind of hinges up and down, so it's kind of like an ankle. And then a little bit of a pivot, but again, that's for transformation. But yeah, so overall, really good articulation, and the joints feel really nice. I'm not worried about anything breaking or getting loose anytime soon. But yeah, size comparison. Let's just fly through it because we got a good bit. Here he is next to a Black Series and a Marvel Legends. He does tower over those. My previous review, go check it out, the uh, Foundation and the Riddler. So yeah, about the same size as the Riddler. And because why not, for fun, here he is next to Thanos and Darkseid. If you want to see videos of them, just let me know. Now, let's, uh, let's get into the good comparisons. Here he is next to that Optimus Prime that was in the uh, intro. Uh, the only Optimus Prime I own that's in the Voyager Deluxe scale, sadly. One day I'll get one. Here he is next to Siege Starscream, if you want to know what he's like next to like a G1-ish Starscream. Here he is next to the um, Movie 1 Studio Series Voyager Starscream. And you can see how the designs don't really look the greatest together because he's got the more insectoid look. He's got the more knight look. Again, I think he'd fit in really well with the Bumblebee figure since there isn't a Megatron to go with those. I will be getting a few of them soon. Second I get the cash, I'm getting the sound wave because I've been eyeballing it in stores. Now let's do just... <laughs> A rapid fire of Megatron, since if you watched my Megatron video for the red figure, you know I have a lot. He is next to little baby Megatrons. Looks great. Here he is next to a couple, my only two prime Megatrons. I do know about that, like, APC Toys or whatever one that's an upscale. I might get that because it looks great. Here he is next to some G1 looking Megatrons. Fusion Cannon isn't as big, but yeah, this is the red. Go check out that video. And uh, another Walmart exclusive one. That kind of sucks. But you know, it is what it is. Here he is next to um, my literal... This was my first um, transforming Transformers figure I got since this Siege Megatron back in... Dang, 2020, so it's been a minute. Here he is next to my only last night figure, the last night Bumblebee. Love these two designs. Glad I have figures of them. They both are really great in their own ways. Here he is next to Galvatron. Yeah. Sucks that we didn't get more Galvatron, but you know what? I accept Galvatron just disappearing if it meant giving us the greatest Megatron design of all time. And finally, here he is next to the... My second favorite movie Megatron design, the... Revenge of the Fallen Voyager class. I gotta transform him correctly so he can stand. But yeah, he still is the biggest Voyager I own. But yeah, they look great. I feel like this design might look cool with the OG Megatron design head. But yeah, he still takes the cake. Also, fun thing between these two guys, they both get the exact same arm cut off. He gets this arm, he gets this arm. And, I mean, on this figure, you can take the arm off, but on uh, this figure, you can't because of the way the shoulder sculpted. It, I mean, you could probably, but it'd be very difficult to get it back on. But, yeah. Um, now, let's get to the jet mode. I'm not going to transform him because, let's be honest, if you really want to know how to transform him, go watch an MGO review. Or, like, the Just Transform It from MGO because 
If I did it, it would be messy as hell, take forever, and you would probably not even remotely know how to transform it by the end of it. So, jump cut. Fun fact, don't try to speedrun transforming seven transformers, because guess what? You'll mess up a lot. But here he is in his jet mode, which is a jet mode I actually really like, even though it's missing the nose cone. I do actually really like this design for a Cybertronian jet. Like the robot designs, the jets became more like humanoid, because it's not as complex as Movie 1 Megatron's jet mode. You can definitely see more human elements, but this is still a, technically a Cybertronian jet. I mean, what jet on Earth looks like this? That's what it looks like with the, uh, the nose cone. Yeah. But yeah, let's just... Take a quick look at it. As you can see, you can see the cockpit there. And there's kind of Swiss cover up the head, but yeah. Oh yeah, if you do flip it upside down, it does look like he's just Megatron in a horrifying pose. Especially if you flip the head around. But you know what? It's alright. I like how the arms, like how this piece covers up this piece for the back. So you don't see any of the jet mode, basically. The arms are kind of down here, so are the feet, but you know what? It's alright. It does have a very simple, yet fun transformation, so... I like how these peg into there. But yeah, if they make him in a Studio Series fashion, which I hope they do with the Battle Mask pretty soon, I hope that they, uh, they could really just tweak some things on this guy and make a perfect figure. But yeah, I hope that Studio Series figure is soon. I desperately want a Studio Series of this figure... But since they made Galvatron, I'm hoping that they'll start doing more Last Night figures, because they did Crosshair and uh, Crosshairs and uh, Hot Rod, so I'm hoping that they might dive into uh, Optimus and Megatron soon. But yeah, I mean, it's a jet. Not much to say. Got some nice gold detail in there. I don't even know what that'd be, but it looks cool. You got these really nice blue pieces. Love that blue paint on them. I think they're like flamethrowers in the movie, although you don't really see them flamethrow much besides with his fusion cannon for literally no reason for like five seconds in the beginning of the movie. Speaking of fusion cannon, that's it right there. That's a nice transformation. Now the sword would peg into there. If there's a train, sorry, live near railroad tracks, that's fun. Just a lot of nice detail. And... Uh, yeah, these are his uh, robot titties, but you know what? It kind of blurs away a bit, since it's all like the same kind of color. So you flip to the back. Oof, that's rough. Now, they try to give him thrusters, but in the movie, he has this huge thruster thing in the back, and it, yeah, that this is not that. You note, his wings look nice. Got some nice gold and a lot of nice sculpting throughout. He's, he's in this jet mode for like five seconds in the movie, so you know what? It doesn't matter. Let's just get to comparisons. Here he is next to Starscream, and you can't deny, get him, if it were in focus, they look great together, um, I like how he has kind of small wings, but huge fins here, he has big wings, but itty bitty little baby fins there, but yeah, they look great together. Here he is next to the only other Cybertronian Megatron jet I have, the tiny little Prime one that looks god-awful. Yeah, then here he is next to, um, the Siege Starscream, which is like the classic G1 Cybertronian jet. This one's definitely more humanoid, but I like both. Here he is next to, last night, Bumblebee. Love these two figures. Uh, his transformation is a nightmare, though. But not as bad as a studio series uh, Bumblebee movie, Bumblebee though. But these two are both really cool figures, really great, love them both. Um, here he is next to Galvatron. Uh, mine just, for some reason, this side doesn't peg in there. Does it perfectly on this side, but not this side. But yeah, they look great together, even though they'd never once be together, because this is Galvatron and Megatron, aka the same person. And finally, here he is next to Revenge of the Fallen and you can s s Megatron and you can see how uh, the Cybertronian designs have changed throughout the movies. Um, but yeah, both look really great. My arm is getting tired from holding this. Whew. But yeah, one thing, one last thing I want to mention about this figure before we get to the final stuff. The plastic, it definitely, you can tell that it's not the same kind of plastic as like normal Transformers like this Bumblebee from the same toy line. 
it is it feels a little different it still feels solid i don't fear that i'm gonna break anything or anything will get loose but it does feel vaguely different than um all the other transformers figures but honestly it's not bad i don't like i said i don't fear anything breaking so uh yeah let's uh get back into robot mode and end this review so do i recommend this guy hell yes ah uh, i love this guy so much he might be my favorite megatron figure i mean i love i love this guy don't get me wrong but man this is just so much more of a solid figure and i love this design even if it doesn't have the cool battle mask poses beautifully i don't fear anything breaking i mean look at that he barely even moved a muscle with that shake and that was a rough shake he's very solid feels great even though the plastic is a little a little different but when i mean a little different i don't mean like bad you can just tell it's not the same kind of quality as this but that doesn't mean it's bad. It's still had this guy a couple of days. I mean, you saw the intro freaking throwing him. Now he takes that took too, but still, there's like bricks beside my bed because, you know, that's, that's fun. So yeah, he landed on some bricks and still looks great. So yeah, very solid figure. Highly recommend it. Um, the Voyager, the normal one, it is a bit pricey, $60 on Amazon. But this guy, if you can get the knockoff, I, I'd get it. Still really great figure. Um, Looks great, even if it is missing the gunmetal gray throughout. And the light piping, I, I honestly don't care. Overall, figure looks great. Really enjoyable. Definitely recommend picking it up. Like, subscribe. Check out my Instagram, Moon Knight XO, where you can uh, get sneak peek previews on next reviews. And get to pick what reviews come next um speaking of next reviews might be uh the scientist here so uh yeah go check out my previous reviews and hope you have a great day but uh megatron wouldn't say that he'd be like uh, i hope you burn and then flick you against a car and then optimus will come in and be like freedom is the right of all sentient beings and he'll be like you shall die with them. These, this is lines from the first movie, but you know what? I don't care. And they know they have an epic battle which lasts literally two seconds and ends up getting Megatron's ass beaten by Optimus. Had it happened to him twice, literally, Dark of the Moon, um, the last night, they go to have a great epic showdown. It lasts five seconds, and then Megatron gets whooped. I mean... At least he didn't die, but he, he lost his arm, oddly enough. Movie 1's really the only movie where Megatron and Optimus had a fight where Megatron didn't go out like a little bitch in the, in like five se within 5 seconds, despite the fact that Megatron's huge. Huh. Also expect Megatron reviews more. Uh, there is that unique toys figure of this guy. Uh, definitely, second I get the money, I'm picking that bad boy up. It looks phenomenal. So yeah, uh, I guess... Uh, Peace out, and uh, watch out, because he will uh, dramatically shoot a flamethrower at you for literally no reason, even though he's trying to hide. Or, I don't know, he'll just... Oh, his titties open. Oh, gotta cover that boy up. Let's just end the review now, it's already a hot mess.